Life is all about survival. And we never really know how long each of us have on this planet. But our job as a species is to persevere and eliminate anything which may threaten our survival. So what's the biggest threat you can think of? Pollution? Disease? Natural disasters? You know, looking around, the powers that be seem to have identified some pretty nasty threats. And so we have the war on terror, the war on crime, the war on drugs, the war on cancer. But when do we ever think about our basic life support needs? We usually don't have to because, luckily for us, we have a system. A system whereby the cost of living can be earned. You can gain employment and work for money, which of course provides access to food, to water, to shelter. And it's a good thing we have this system. Because without money, you're as good as dead. But if you're without a job, no need to worry, because, yeah again, we have a system. If you're out of work, for whatever reason, simply apply for government aid. See, all the people with jobs pay taxes. And since the government understands that a certain level of unemployment is to some degree to be expected, they simply dip into some of that tax money and hand it over to those without jobs through a magical process called the redistribution. But it kind of makes you wonder, if this is our big solution to unemployment, where's the threshold? What level of unemployment can we really sustain? And what would happen if all these jobs suddenly disappeared? The world is facing an urgent challenge and needs to create, listen to this number, needs to create 600 million jobs to generate growth and maintain social cohesion. Defence giant BAE Systems has confirmed it's cutting almost 3,000 jobs at sites across the country. Tata Steel, which employs 90,000 people in its UK steel business, has announced it is cutting 900 jobs around the UK. Another blow to the region's economy today as the energy giant E.ON announced that 600 jobs are to go at a call centre in Essex. The Pfizer facility in Kent, the world's biggest drugs company, runs the UK's largest foreign-owned research and development facility. It will close entirely with the loss of most of 2,400 jobs. Ford has announced to trade union representatives that it will cease manufacturing cars in the UK after more than 100 years. Japan's Honda is to cut around 800 jobs at its plant near Swindon in southwest England. And we start tonight with news that the BBC has announced cuts and job losses across the region as part of a plan to make 20% savings. Hundreds of police jobs have already been slashed with thousands more under threat. A Kodak, the firm that invented the handheld camera and remains one of America's best known brands, has filed for bankruptcy protection. Rangers Football Club, one of the most famous in Britain, has announced it's gone into administration. More than 300 of the 800 stores that Woolworths used to occupy are still standing empty more than a year and a half after it collapsed at the end of 2008. More retailers are expected to go bust over the next few months. All 187 outlets are to be shut with the loss of almost 1,400 jobs. The administrator said it is apparent that we cannot continue to trade. It was once Britain's biggest sports retailer, but today JJB Sports announced plans to go into administration. Six and a half thousand jobs are at risk after the electrical retailer Comet announced it's going into administration. More than 4,000 jobs at risk after HMV announced that it was going into administration. It follows other chains. It's Blockbuster. It's become the latest casualty on the high street this week. A quarter of its stores are going to close. More than 700 people are going to be made redundant. There's serious doubts now about the future of around 6,000 jobs in the UK after the company asked for its shares to be suspended last Wednesday. Four Minister's employees have come to the decision to occupy the store as a direct consequence of the actions of management. A buyer hasn't been found with a group currently employs a total of nearly 4,000 staff. Taiwan's IT giant Foxconn announced it plans to replace up to half a million human workers with robots in the next three years. It's called Scanner Shop. Customers love it. Very simple system. Each load is almost 300 times. 
tons. But look closely, there's no one behind the wheel. The facility boasts the first robotic system in the UK to deliver supplies such as linen and food and an automated robotic pharmacy. <laughs> While this idea may have been partially true in the past, the argument simply doesn't hold up anymore. Computers these days are much smaller, faster, and durable, with ever-increasing mobility, dexterity, and artificial intelligence. They also become cheaper as time goes on. Moore's Law demonstrates how computer processing power doubles approximately every 18 months. So, even if we were to create new jobs, why are we pretending we would give these jobs to humans? So, what does the government have to say about all this? Well, in June of 2011, not knowing what to do with the increasing unemployment, they invested £5 billion in the Welfare to Work scheme, also known as the Work Programme. Let's face it, unemployment is not a threat to this system for the reasons we are usually given by mainstream outlets. Forget all the noise about economic recession, benefit cheats, immigration, or the idea that people are simply too lazy to look for a job. Automization, thus technological unemployment, is a mathematical inevitability of a system based on perpetual growth. And this pending eventuality is vastly misunderstood by the majority. And not just the majority of voters, there isn't a single politician who acknowledges, let alone understands the implications of technological unemployment. And what's worse, when human beings don't understand something, that's where fear comes from. We fear what we don't understand, and we fight what we don't understand. Okay, I have a very concrete question for you because you're getting wrapped up in this money and regulators and who is at fault. Sorry, Technological automation is replacing jobs yeah. at the moment. Right. And it has been forever, it's doubling every year. Yeah. That's the rate, regardless of what financial system you have and what regulators yeah. you put in that place. So, without jobs as a basis for the economy, it's not really a question, more of a statement. Your system is going to be obsolete. And in fact, you're very lucky that you've been working this long because you get to get out at the last floor. It's going away. Yeah, but on the other side of the coin, I fear for my children. Oh. Absolutely, absolutely. So why are you a fan of the banks then? Even when we do recognise the implications of mass mechanisation, people tend to think, not my job. Not the job I happen to have spent four years studying for, the business my family left me, the product I've invested my life savings in. That job will be around forever. I'm sorry to tell you that that is merely wishful thinking. And yes, your job too is vulnerable. Even if not directly threatened by automation, we are all affected by the mechanisms of causation. When a store fails, the products on those shelves, thus manufacturing, is affected. Just as when the product becomes obsolete, the stores in turn suffer. Also, when 50% of household products are either redundant or freely downloadable, what do you think will happen to the world of advertising? Autonomous cars eliminate the need for a driving license, thus the need for driving schools and instructors. And since accidents are near impossible, there will be a reduction in time with car insurance companies, repair shops, and of course, taxable offences relating to speeding fines and the like. And as the overall state of the economy weakens, commercial banks, real estate, and government funded institutions such as education and healthcare will all be affected. So if by now you're asking, 
What's the real solution to the unemployment problem? My question is, what's the problem? The loss of a job is historically synonymous with degradation and poverty. Yet we are looking at a future in which organic food and clean energy are cultivated with levels of abundance never before seen. Homes can be constructed within a day without any human involvement. All tools, aesthetic objects and even medicine are designed, downloaded, customized and printed on demand, either made from in your home or delivered via autonomous vehicles, which have improved road safety and reduced travel time. Then of course there is better healthcare, free education, less waste and this is all to say nothing of the explosion in entertainment. The real solution to our problems have nothing to do with capitalism, socialism, communism, the free enterprise system or any other sub-related group, for these are market economies. And as the financial market dies, we need to transition into a new sustainable economy. One which is designed around ensuring our survival. Meaning we must all have equal access to life supporting needs without the ridiculous number game or any monetary exchange. We have the technology and the understanding today of how to scientifically orient our resource distribution. But of course, these types of transitions are never easy. There is nothing preventing a temporary period of mass poverty and starvation. In fact, there is nothing preventing us from holding on to this outdated, competition-based, infinite growth market economy until we have nothing left. By raising awareness of our technological potential and having the population understand the imminent need to transition, we can alleviate the fear usually generated through ignorance and allow the change to happen with little opposition. Now, luckily for us, I don't have to sit here and propose setting up a mass awareness raising campaign. It already exists. With over half a million members and hundreds of chapters worldwide, the Zeitgeist Movement is the largest grassroots movement in history and has set out to raise awareness as to our true potential on this planet, while at the same time advocating a transition into a new, sustainable, global paradigm.